After watching part 1 of this video series, you might think, what is the easy solution to control a lot of LEDs individually? And we don't have to search an eternity, because I have used them before and I'm using them right now with my DIY ambient lighting for my TV. I'm talking about LEDs with separate driver ICs, like those WS2801, or with integrated ICs like these WS2812. But I think this SMD package is not ideal for the matrix. So I searched for WS2812 LEDs in a normal DIP package, like most people know their LEDs. And they do exist on various sites, but the price is a bit expensive. For example, Adafruit offers 5 of them for 5 bucks. That means I would need to spend $150 for 150 LEDs. Hmm, that sounds like such a great deal. No. Not really, but I found those PL9823, which are compatible with the WS2812. And only $20 for 100 pieces is certainly a nice price. The first thing I did when I received them was to find the pinout. And from the round side to the flat side it is data in, VDD, ground and data out. I daisy chained a couple of those together on my breadboard, with the first data in connected to my Arduino Nano, and the data outs feed the next data in. It's pretty easy. But do I need no external ports? Well, the datasheet apparently recommends a not labeled resistor and capacitor. Who doesn't love those? The capacitor is probably a common 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor. If you don't know what decoupling means, then check out this great example based article about the subject. Link is in the description. But luckily I found a weird Chinese site where they give a value for the resistor. And the WS2811 LED driver datasheet gives even an explanation why it is needed. Basically to prevent power spikes. But a big problem appeared when I tried to use the LEDs with the resistors. Red, green and blue alone works fine. But mixed colors with bigger current draws do not work properly. The reason is that the voltage drop across the resistor gets too high when more current flows, which prevents the LEDs to get their minimum of 4.5 volts. So we would have to increase the overall voltage. But I really don't want to do this, because a legitimate seller claims that those bastards can explode when they get 6 volts, which can happen when they are not lit in the matrix. Of course, I threw away those resistors, tested the whole thing again and moved on to the matrix. At first I spread the 4 pins of those 150 LEDs a bit apart, so that soldering to them will be a bit easier later on. Then I put a drop of hot glue in a square and positioned my LED with a flat side left inside the glue. Make sure that all LEDs face the same direction with their flat side, it'll make the power wiring easier. And if you accidentally swap the orientation around, like I did one time right here, then it will not explode, but you will have to replace it because there is no reverse voltage protection. After all LEDs are glued to the matrix, it is time for the power wires. And this is a crucial part. A bad power wiring can result in voltage changes in the ground wire, which corrupts the data signal. And something like that leads to such horrible signal distortions you see right here. I recommend thick solid wire. This is 3 times 1.5 square millimeter and you can easily find it in your next home improvement store. At least 15 meter of this stuff should do the trick. Firstly, I had to remove the outer isolation and ended up with my three different colored wires. I used mostly brown and black wire to connect all VDD pins in a column and green yellow and blue wire to connect all ground pins in a column. This will take quite a while and when all columns are done, it is still not done. We have to connect the rows VDD and ground pins as well. For that I bended the wire into this half circle shape and jumped from one column to the next, connecting VDD to VDD and ground to ground, obviously. But just one of those jumper rows is not enough. I had to learn that the hard way, remember? In the end I did three of those, but if you have the time and the wire, then I strongly recommend to do even more. Hell, do all of the rows if you can. During this power wire construction, I also regularly tested the LEDs with my bench power supply. 
to see whether I wired up everything correctly. And the good thing about those LEDs is they light up blue without a signal, so you know that there's no short circuits and you did everything right. After this madness of soldering is done, it is time for more soldering with the data wire. Again, I use solid wire, but this time even a thin wire should work fine. For the rows, it is super easy. The data out connects to the next data in and so on and on and on. But at the end of the rows, this data out has to connect to the first data in of the next row. This picture from the Gladiator software should give you a good idea of what I mean. After the soldering for the data wire is done, it is time for more soldering with the 100 nanofarad capacitors. You see a pattern here? I soldered them closely to the VDD and ground pin of each LED. Okay, almost done. The last component for the matrix is a 150 ohm resistor. This one connects close to the data in of the first LED and reduces the noise on the line and protects our digital pin of the Arduino. Speaking of Arduino, I chose the nano version for this build. Those two look similar, but one of them uses an FTDI chip for serial communication and the other a CH340. And both kinds will work fine, even for the later Gladiator support. I went with the FTDI this time. Now we need some power. This shop claims that the maximum current of the LED should be around 50 milliamps, which I can confirm because I double checked it with my current clamp later on and got around 7.4 amps. So we need at least 8 amps. I went with this 5 volts 12 amp power supply in the end because you will see the reason in part 3. You will also need a plug with a power cord to fire up the supply. We did a bit of an overkill with this thick flexible wire, but I had it laying around. Plug it in, the LED lights up green and now I can adjust the voltage with this little knob to around 5 volts. Then we use this 2.5 square millimeter flexible wire again to connect 5 volts and ground to two LEDs of the matrix which are positioned far away from each other. I also use this small wire here to hook up my Arduino's 5 volts and ground to this supply as well. And then I soldered my data wire to pin 3 of the Arduino and used plenty of hot glue to secure the supply to the side of the matrix. And it is done! I connected the Arduino to my computer to upload a couple of different codes which I found around the internet. Of course you can download them as well. Link is in the description. And there you can also find a parts list with example sellers. And you support my channel if you use those links. Thanks for watching the second part. Stay tuned for the final part where I will show you how to use the Gladiator software with this matrix. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. And maybe you also want to take a look at my Facebook page so you know what I'm up to. Stay creative and I will see you next time.